Yar! Oh, hey there, physics pirate mateys. We're going to be solving out one last problem of <clears throat> projectiles. And this one, this is where it's a little bit challenging. But here we go. And so this uh, problem, as we work through it, I want you to copy it down onto a sheet of paper. You're going to enter your answers onto uh, Go Formative. And yeah, you'll be all set. But this is a problem that actually combines a lot of skills all together. So you'll kind of see it's still solving out for range, horizontal, and vertical velocity. But you'll see at the end, once you answer one of these, you're probably going to be answering all of these all together. And there's a couple of twists in here. So let's get going. So before we actually uh, set up the problem, it's really kind of making sure we understand what's going on. We got this pirate ship. It fires a cannonball at an enemy ship at a velocity of 100 meters per second at 20 degrees above the horizontal. What is the cannonball's range? What is the horizontal velocity and vertical velocity on impact with the enemy ship? All that kind of stuff. So uh, to begin with, I'm going to draw a little picture of what this actually going on. So we got these pirates. They're on the sea. And you know, let's make this one all right here's here's our pirate ship and, and this is a horrible looking pirate ship but anyways it's got the skull and crossbones it oh it is horrible but it also has a cannon and what a cannon that is and but it's firing at an enemy ship. And that enemy ship is over here. And let's just say that they just got a little lame boat. And, but anyways, here's the thing. So they tell us some information about this cannonball, it's fired at 100 meters per second at an angle of 20 degrees above the horizontal. And they want us to figure out the range. We've done stuff like that. And because this follows a parabolic path, and it's hard to describe that, we're going to split it up into two other ways. So here's where you start doing it on your paper. And, and drawing it out is usually uh, helpful too. But... We're going to split up our problem, X and Y. That's no different. But the thing about this next part is, in step two, we list our initial speeds. And so for this, this gets a little bit tricky. And because the initial speed, it's not 100 meters per second and zero. Because this is fired at an angle, it's not fired horizontally, that means that our 100 meters per second actually has X and Y components. And we need to figure out what those X and Y components are because really those are our initial speeds in the X and Y direction. So when we're solving out for X, Remember uh, solving out for the X component? Doo, 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 doo. It's equal to the cosine of the angle times the hypotenuse for this triangle. When we're talking about the Y, it's equal to the sine of the angle times the hypotenuse. And so we're going to keep these things separate and keep them on their sides. And so I'm going to solve out for the initial speed on the X. I'm going to do cosine of the angle. We're talking about 20 degrees. And the hypotenuse is 100 meters per second. I can type that into my calculator. And when I do, oh, goodness. Do, do, do. Cosine 20 degrees times 100. We get 93. Oops, I'll put it down here. 93.97 meters per second. And that is the initial speed 
in the x direction. On the y side, I use sine of 20 degrees times the hypotenuse, which is 100 meters per second. And if I do that, I get 34.20 meters per second. That is my initial speed on this side. Oops. So this is where it make, uh, is the big difference between the other problems that we did. Because the other ones, we always launched it horizontally at a certain speed, and that made this that same horizontal speed, and this was zero. But because it's at an angle, we have x and y components, and we can draw that as a triangle, and we can calculate what those components are, and we use those as the initial speeds. So that's that part, and that's step two. Step three is saying what's going on. Horizontally, we still imagine like that cannonball, if it was fired horizontally and gravity was turned off, that it would just float off into space in a straight line and it would move at a constant speed. And vertically though, it's going to be accelerating because gravity is pulling it down. But we do need to understand that uh, as gravity is pulling it, this isn't just falling down. This is actually moving upward. It has a positive vertical velocity initially. So it's really going to end up kind of going up this way. Like it was shot up, and as it goes up, its velocity will end up getting slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, and then come back down. So it just kind of goes up, and it will come back down. All that kind of stuff. And that's <clears throat> what will be going on, and that's going to play a role in what we do. And so now that we have our setup, now we can answer these questions. We need to answer the cannonball's range. Remember that range, it is a horizontal distance, which means that it's solved on the x side. We need to make sure that we solve it on the correct side because it's horizontal. We do that on the horizontal side. But there's only one equation that works on the horizontal side. It's this one. This V equals D over T. Because there's no acceleration, it's moving at a constant speed. We are going to solve out for this distance, and so we're going to put in things that we know, like this velocity. But it is not 100. It is 93.97 meters per second, because that's the horizontal speed. We need that. Then uh, we can put in the D and leave it as D because we are going to solve for it, but we need the time. And oh, shucks, we don't have the time. Just like before, when we don't know time on one side, we go over to the other side to solve it out. But the tricky thing about this is that if we use this equation to solve it out, d equals vi times t plus 1 half at squared. We have... In order to solve for time, we have the acceleration, got it. We have the initial speed, we got it. But the distance, ah, nuts. They do not tell us the vertical distance. We don't know how far this is actually falling. And so, or how high it, that it actually goes either. So we don't know that. So we can't use this equation. Oh, man. But we do have another equation that we can use on this side. And it's this one is VF equals VI plus A times T. Because we know the acceleration, got it. We know the initial speed, got it. The final speed, oh, they didn't tell us the final speed, but we can reason through this because when it started at 32.20 meters per second going up, uh, it'll slow down, slow down, slow down, come to a stop just for a moment, and then come back down. If it comes back down and reaches the same height that it was, but going down, it actually has the same speed. It's 32.20, but it is negative for the velocity. So we're going to use that. This is considered the final velocity. It's negative, whatever we started at, because we're dealing with something that it's being shot, and it's gonna land in the same plane that it's uh, started on, or the same height. It's level, all that kind of stuff. 
And, and that's what we're going to assume when we do these problems. Then, our initial velocity, it's this, 32.20. Not 100, and it's not zero. Plus, the acceleration, it's negative 9.8 times time. And now we can go through and solve for time using this equation. And so we got to undo things to get t by itself. The first thing we need to undo is this 32.20. It's being added to all this stuff. We have to subtract it. So we subtract 32.20 from both sides. And you'll notice I'm going to kind of scoot over here that we end up with negative 64.40. Oh, and, ah, oh, Broberg, what are you doing? Broberg screwed this up right from the beginning. I'm sorry. This is negative thir er, 34.20. That's okay. Oops. So we subtracted 34.20 from both sides. It goes away on this side, and this gets really 68.40. Sorry about that. So I am <clears throat> miscalculated this. This was 34.20. Okay. So it started at 34.20, comes back down. It's now negative 34.20. And since the initial velocity was 34.20, we subtract it. Yep, now we're back at over here. Equals. Oh, I wrote it right there, but I didn't write it there. Okay. <clears throat> Equals negative 9.8 times time. Now to get t by itself, remember here, we divide by negative 9.8. Now I'm, uh, add 9.8. Don't do that. And so cross that out. And now when we divide it, we have uh, negative 68.4 divided by negative 9.8. We get... 6.98 equals the time. And so, now that I have the time, remember this is not your answer. We're so close. But we can take that and we can put it back over here because remember we came over to this side to solve for time. We were missing it to solve for the range. We got to put it back over here. So this is 6.98. And we're going to use that and multiply it by 93.97 to solve for our D, because we have to multiply by 6.98 on both sides. And we get our D. Because I solve for D in the horizontal direction, it's DX. I get 655.87. And it's meters. So I just solved out for the range. And that's kind of how you do the problems. So, yay, we did it. And that is a tough problem. But, oh my goodness, they also have these things that we, they want us to figure out. The horizontal and vertical velocity. Well, in this process, we actually answered all that stuff. Because the horizontal velocity, remember we said a horizontal component is this. It remains constant. That's awesome, because that is the answer, 93.97 meters per second. Great. And the vertical velocity on impact with the enemy ship, well, when it comes back down, it's going up, comes back down. We said the vertical velocity, if it started at 34.20, that it ends at negative 34.20. So it's the same thing as what we calculated here, just negative. And so, huzzah, we answered all of it. And, and that's how you uh, work out these types of problems. They are tough, they are long, and, <clears throat> but if you have questions, make sure you ask your teacher. Have a wonderful day, you guys.